YouTube and welcome back to Creatures, Cavers, and Crafting. Today we're going to channel our inner Bob Ross and talk a little bit about trees. Uh, if you're like me and you play a lot of tabletop role-playing games, uh, you've probably collected a uh, small forest in plastic trees. Um, they're great terrain pieces. Uh, they look good on the table. Uh, they're just, you know, overall universal when it comes to whatever setting you're playing except for when you start to get into Gamma World and Mutant Crawl Classics. Uh, if we look at the books, uh, sometimes we get an idea of a huge lush jungle um, that's been, you know, untouched for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. Um, and I kind of wanted to bring that uh, to my tabletop, but at the same time, I wanted to I wanted to have a, a, uh, a mutated feeling, you know, something that was foreign and alien, but at the same time, um, a tree. For this project, I used a fake plastic berry plant that I picked up from Dollar Tree. It had some very unique uh, aspects to it with the berries on it, even some of the leaves. Uh, just kind of jumped out uh, and gave me a lot of creative ideas. So uh, I thought we would see what we could do with it. I started off by cutting a section of the berries off and then spray priming them. Uh, this is an aerosol primer and it's going to react with the uh, foam berries on there. Uh, as you can see, it's going to create a lot of pivots. Um, what I would do if you're going to repeat this process, give it some light coats, then go back over it maybe once or twice. We don't want to melt it completely. We want those nasty little uh, crevices that are going to remain in the berries. So we're done priming and we're going to move on to some washes. Um, First of all, let me show this glaze. I love this glaze. It's going to add a like a, a glowing look, almost like the tree is radiated. I also like this dark red. Um, it's going to make things look like a sore wound. And this dark green is just going to be uh, used for the back area just to make more uh, of the, those crevices pop. I am applying the glaze first to the front areas of the tree. Uh, this is just going to um, grab your eye a little bit more. Um, again, I wanted this to look like it was irradiated or maybe it was mutated in some fashion. Uh, just just kind of an effect. Uh, but there is no exact science. Uh, I would highly recommend that you use uh, other inks. In fact, I was even uh, thinking about going back and using some blues uh, for my next project. Now that we've applied all of our washes, I'm going to move on to a technical paint by Citadel. This is Nurgle's Rot. Uh, this is going to look really great. Um, it's going to look like a seeping corruption from the berries. And I'm just going to go into these crevices. And you notice how the washes have uh, just really made those crevices look uh, deeper. And we're just going to apply the uh, Nurgle Rot inside. It's going to give it a very nasty look. I'm just going to pick those spots out. And for the red side, uh, what I used was a technical paint, Blood for the Blood God. Uh, that's going to make the berries look like they're bleeding. Here we are. We're just putting some more into those crevices. It's going to look very nasty once we're done. Once done with the technical paints, I went back with this Citadel base paint, uh, Wog Flesh, on the stem. Uh, you can highlight this or leave it uh, just as it is here in the picture. Uh, really, the choice is up to you. Um, highlighting might add a little bit more detail, but you're not going to really see too much past the berries. So it's really just your call. So this is going to be our second tree that we're going to make today. And I've already cut out another berry branch. I'm going to start by basing it using my air gun here. Uh, if you don't have an air gun, you can use uh, a regular paintbrush. Just maybe water down several coats of uh, whatever primer color you want to use. And again, I'm using my airbrush. I don't want to use the aerosol can because for this one, I don't want the berries to be dissolved. Now that we're done priming, this is going to be a perfect uh, setup to create a bunch of eyes. And what I'm going to do first of all to get this effect is I'm going to apply a base color uh, in a large circle over uh, the berry. 
allow this to dry if it takes two three coats just be patient with it and once I'm done I'm going to take the same color and I'm just going to mix a little white into it and just put that in the middle of that base uh, starting color and this is just going to be our foundation for the iris of the eye and again uh, when we put this on um, you want to leave uh, some of that dark uh, base color in the background uh, this one I'm going to go a little wide with it just so that I have more room to work whenever I start putting the um, details to the pupil uh, but again I'm still leaving a defined ring there now we're going to start adding some detail to the iris and I'm using a white paint uh, and a pretty stiff detail brush we're just going in the middle and just fanning it out kind of think of like a uh, asterisk shape or maybe like a star we're not using a whole lot of paint uh, again uh, if you want to start with just like some light coats and then go back over and add like a second coat uh, you can do so we just want to get some lines to show off in the detail like that So I'm going to start trimming out the detail of the iris using a black paint. I'm also going to add that pupil in the middle. Uh, a couple of things here when you're doing this step. Uh, it seems like you got to have very steady hands, but just keep in mind that if you make a mistake, uh, you can easily go back over it and just add some white. Uh, let's say that that trim gets a little too thick in a certain spot, or maybe you just go off uh, where you didn't want to go. Uh, you can easily just paint back over it. Um, take your time. Uh, on the smaller berries, if you don't want to add that trim, you just want to add the pupil, uh, you can also do that and it might speed up your process. Once we're finished trimming out the eye and putting the pupil in, I'm going to take a white paint and what I want to do is mimic uh, light or glare off the lens of the eye itself. I'm going to take a detail brush and I'm just going to put a little white to the outside of the pupil. And then I might just add maybe one or two little dots there in the iris. This is going to look really good once we put a glaze over it. So now we're going to move on to the Citadel Technical Paint Blood for the Blood God. I used this earlier on the other tree whenever I was going for the bleeding effect. Uh, for this step we're going to use that fine tip brush again. And we're just going to put a little bit of the paint on the tip of the brush. And we're going to start to apply this very lightly to the sides of the eye. And this is just going to kind of create like a vein look. And I want to note that we can actually go kind of light with this. Uh, in fact, some of the better veins that I did uh, were whenever I barely touched the eye. Kind of like so. I'm just going to go all the way around the eye. You can create some branch effects like so, like a Y. There we have it. We're going to continue to repeat the same steps to complete this project. I want to note that this may be a little tedious and it can take some time. Uh, the best results I found were to just take uh, breaks, uh, maybe break this off into several painting sessions. Uh, it's going to get uh, better results. You're going to feel better about doing this, especially if you're going to do more than one tree. I'm going to use a washer for the base. Uh, in the center, I put an index card. Uh, you can use masking tape or regular painter's tape. We just want to prevent the hot glue from leaking out the center. And here I am. I'm just taking the tree and applying the hot glue across. This may take several layers. We just want to build it up, allow that support to cool, uh, and then you should have a pretty stable base. Here's the eye stalk that I did, and in another picture you'll see I actually kind of layered up on the stalk itself to make like veins. Now we're going to start to prime the bottoms. Uh, for the first tree I just primed it black. And for our eye stalk I went back with a very bright red and again, you can see uh, how I just took the hot glue and created veins up the stalk. 
For my first tree, I'm going to use this Vallejo Earth Texture Acrylic. I'm just go ahead and move the model a little closer for you guys so you can see a better angle on it. And I'm just going to open up the bottle, let you guys take a look at it. It's a very fine paste. And we're just going to take a brush and load that up and start applying it to the base itself. We want to be careful. We don't want to get it on the berries. We don't want to get it on the stalk. Just kind of smooth it around. If you don't have this, you don't have to go out and buy it. Um, you can easily just take glue and maybe some craft sand or if you have some sand out in the back. Uh, easily can mimic this step. I just like using this because um, it looks a little bit better. And plus I use this on other minis as well. There we go. Once we've allowed the Vallejo Earth Texture to dry, we're going to go back over the base with this burnt umber. Allow that to dry and then we're going to start applying a dry brush. In this case I'm using a territorial beige, but you can use any light color that you have on hand, uh, grays, or any other light tan. Now we're going to move on to flocking the base. This will be our last step. In this case I just grabbed some rocks from outside and I had some static grass that I glued to the base. It's going to really finish off the project make it pop. To add the finishing touches to the base on our eye stalk, I'm going to use this Blood for the Blood God technical paint. I'm just going to take a flat brush and I'm going to load it up and start applying this to the base. Now I want to note that if you don't have this technical paint, you might achieve the same effect by using a red ink and maybe a clear uh, glossy coat. Uh, Art Coat is a great technical paint as well that might help you achieve the same result. Just experiment with it. I'm just going to put this generously all over the base. And then we're just going to allow it to dry. Should come out something like this. Very nasty looking. I like it already. Our last step is going to be applying the Citadel Art Coat. Uh, to the surface of the eyes. This is going to give it that nice wet sheen look. Uh, when we're applying this, be gentle. Uh, we don't want to break off the eyeballs. They are pretty secure on there, but they can come off if you uh, brush very heavily. Uh, if they do, don't worry about it. We can cover with paint and just apply that eyeball to the base. All right, and once we're done, let's go take a look at this on the table. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate your viewership. I'm going to continue to try to crank out more of these videos. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and follow. Uh, and more importantly, have a great and wonderful day. Thank you.